welcome back to Continental Food and Cake TV. If it's your first time here, you're highly, highly welcome. In today's video, I'm so excited because I'm going to be showing you how to cook porridge yam or call potted yam or call asaro and in Nibola we call it jawai so I'm so so excited to show you this recipe today and this recipe is very very close to my heart and I'm so happy that I'm showing you all today so today I'm going to be cooking porridge yam but for some of us who doesn't know what porridge yam is I'm going to first of all explain what the yam is the yam is a plant that is planted in a soil and it takes four to six months to grow before harvesting and during the time they harvest the yam is mainly end of July and August that is when you get the new yam but today I'm going to be cooking the old yam which is more drier so I'm going to show you what the yam is but I'm just explaining what the yam is then secondly I'm going to explain what the porridge yam is so the porridge yam is the yam that is cooked with the tomato sauce that is well fried with vegetable oil and other ingredients added to it such as tomato, uh, pepper, onion, curry there's a lot that go into porridge yam so I'm so excited to show you this recipe today and this recipe is very very close to my heart so next I'm going to introduce you to all the ingredients you need in cooking porridge yam so let's get started <laughs> make porridge yam you need yam because yam is the key ingredients you need in making porridge yam and in here I have peeled yam that I've peeled and cut into cube sizes and I've been soaking this yam for one hour because it's an old yam this is what yam looks like so in here I have one tuba of yam that I peeled and this is old yam that's why I soaked it for one hour and to stop the browning I add a little bit of vinegar to stop it from browning at this point now the yam is very dry because we're in june end of june so the yam is so so dry that's why i soaked it but if you're using new yam you don't need to do this next ingredients i have is plant tomato one can two large onion scotch bonnet which is optional if you don't want your porridge jam spicy just leave this out and i'm going to be using paprika this is frozen three i have this paprika is sweet, it's not spicy, so I'm going to be using three of it and I'm going to be blending all this in blender. Next, I have beef stock, leftover beef stock that I have at home, one cup of vegetable oil, one tablespoon of crayfish, smoked macro fish, which I made myself and I have a video where I made this macro fish. I'll try and link it down be below under the description box so you can go check it out if you want to see how I made this smoked macro fish. I'll put the video there so you can check it out. And in here I have beef washed chopped into bite sizes which is optional. If you don't want to use beef you can just leave it out. You can use scrap prunes feel free to use whatever you want to use to cook your porridge yam next i have curry powder and i have green sweet pepper or bell pepper which i'm going to use to garnish it and i'm using half red onion one and also palm oil two tablespoons of palm oil so i'm going to be frying the tomato sauce with the palm oil and the vegetable oil the two of them mixed together so i'm going to show you that so the next ingredient is salt for taste non-chicken two and i'm going to be using one and a half because i have the meat stock but if you don't have the stock you can go ahead and use two but because of the meat stock i'm going to be using one and a half because here this meat stock is has taste and it has a lot of spice here you can also cook this um, porridge here without the meat stock sometimes i cook it without the meat stock but if you have it available try it it's very nice feel free so next i'm going to be blending the tomato and in here this is the blender so i'm going to pour the one can of plum tomato in here these are all the pepper put it in onion and i'm going to be blending with one non chicken so blend it together i do that sometimes some spinach here I don't know if I showed you I'm going to be using it to cook the 
Pyridium and I'm using just a bit, I'm not using a lot, you can see I'm just using a handful of spinach but you can go ahead and use more if you want but I just like it a little bit in my porridge jam and next I'm going to be cutting all this because I'm using it to cook the porridge jam so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do this is the spinach washed handful this is handful but you can use more you can just see it's just handful and I've washed this you need to wash your vegetables before you cut them, very important. So this is what it's looking like, green pepper, red onion and spinach. Next, I'm going to be deboning the macro fish and I'm going to be throwing the head away because I'm not using the head of the fish. Please, this step is very important. You need to make sure that you take out all the bones that are in the macro fish. It takes time, just take your time and make sure that you take out all the bone. When you're cooking porridge jam is very very important you do not want the bone in your porridge jam you don't want to cook with the bone did you see the bone so this is what it's looking like that is going to be you don't need that so the fish is ready so the next thing i'm going to do now is to start frying the tomato sauce so i have my pan heating up in a medium high next i'm going to be adding the vegetable oil it's greening then add in the palm oil two tablespoons of palm oil mix it together next add in the red onion mix that in so what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow this fry 2 to 3 minutes before I add in the blended tomato. So it's been 2 minutes and this is what it's looking like. The aroma that comes out of this vegetable and palm oil, oh my god, it smells really nice. So next I'm going in with the tomato blend, which I did not blend smoothly. I blend it but not too smooth because I want the tomato chunk in there. So you can see what I'm saying, I didn't blend it smooth. Next, I'm going to be frying the tomato sauce for 10 to 15 minutes and stirring it in between. This step is very important because this is what makes the porridge yam. This is what is going to give your yam the taste, which is the sauce. So if you don't fry your sauce really well, the porridge yam is not going to be tasting delicious and you don't want that. So please fry the sauce for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring it in between to give us that taste and flavor that we want in our porridge yam. So it's been four minutes and this is what it's looking like. So next I'm going to add in the beef. I'm adding the beef now. But please, if you've not cooked your porridge jam with the beef before, please try it. It tastes so yummy. Imagine eating your porridge jam and you bite into the beef. Oh my God, it's a yumminess in another level. So please try it. You're going to love it. I'm going to be frying this tomato sauce with the beef because I'm not going to cook the beef separately. So this is going to be frying together. Next, I'm going to be adding some salt, then adding the curry. So, I'm adding some curry here, mix it in really well. And remember, I blended the tomato with one non chicken, so there's one non chicken in here already because I blend it with the tomato. Still frying the tomato sauce and the beef is in there cooking and frying at the same time you can see what the beef is looking like because I cut them into bite sizes so 
as you're frying your tomato you're also frying your beef and cooking your beef at the same time and while frying this please do not leave your tomato sauce and walk away because you need to stay it every minute stay it in because you do not want your tomato sauce to get burned because if you get one, it's going to affect the taste of your porridge jam and also the color. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to stir it in every minute. And this process of frying the tomato sauce takes between 10 to 15 minutes. So you can see what the tomato sauce is looking like. You can see that the tomato is separating from the oil. That will tell you that it's ready for you to mix it with your yam. I'm going to add in the crayfish, one tablespoon of crayfish, branded crayfish, add it in and mix it in. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to ask you for a favor. If you're new here, you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Join the Continental Food and Cake family. We upload video every week and we'll have new recipe to show you every week. So please subscribe and join the family. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take this out and bring the yam himself to mix with the sauce because the sauce is ready. So that's the pot with the yam. So next what I'm going to do is pour in the tomato sauce. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful tomato sauce that I fried really well. So this step is very important because the tomato sauce is the base and that is what is going to make your porridge jam taste really nice next I'm going to be adding the stock in there add it in mix it really really well you need to mix the yam and the sauce together next I'm going to be adding some hot water just above the level of the yam so mix 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 Next, I'm going to be adding the smoked fish and I washed it with warm water. Add it in and mix it in. Next, then add the non chicken. So, in total, I'm using non chicken one and a half because I'm using the meat stock. But in case you're not using the meat stock, please taste your curry jam. You might need more seasoning. And you can use any seasoning that you have at home. Be feel free. So I'm mixing that in. I'll add a little bit of salt, just a little bit. And also mix it in. When cooking your porridge jam, you need to mix everything that you want now. The salt, make sure that the taste is what you want. That you're satisfied with the taste before you cover it to cook. And also the water. At this point is when you add the amount of water you want. You don't want to start adding water later on when you're cooking porridge. Yeah? So that's what I'm doing now. And you can see that the, the sauce is above the level of the yam. Next, I'm going to cover the pot with the lid and allow the porridge yam to cook in a low heat until soft and tender. Please, this step is very important. You do not want to cook your porridge jam in a high heat because your porridge jam is going to burn and it's going to affect the taste of the porridge jam. While your porridge jam is cooking in a low heat, it's going to help the yam absorb some of the sauce and make it taste even better and give it very, very good, unique taste. This is the secret of cooking porridge jam. So please follow this step and it's going to take between 20 to 25 minutes for the porridge jam to cook. After 20 to 25 minutes, I'm going to check on the porridge jam and this is what the porridge jam is looking like. So at this point, you can use a fork and check if the yam is cooked enough for your likeness or soft enough. And that is what I'm doing with the fork. So at this point, you can still cook the yam the more or you can stop here, but I'm happy with it. Next, I'm going to be adding the green pepper and mix it together. This is just to add a bit of flavor and color as well. So next, I'm going to be matching the yam with this matcha, which is optional. I'm not going to be matching all the yam, just some of it. 
just to give me that thickness that I want which is optional you don't have to do this you can just leave the yam the way it is but I just like to match it a bit and it's because it's old yam if it was new yam you don't even need to match it so I'm going to do that just match some of it not all of it so that's it next I'm going to be adding the spinach which is optional you can just leave the porridge yam the way it is but I like to add a bit of vegetable but why I'm adding the vegetable I'm going to turn my heat off as soon as you add your vegetable in your porridge yam you just need to turn the heat off because the heat from the porridge yam is going to cook the vegetable I want the vegetable fresh and green you don't want it to overcook because the vegetable takes one or two minutes to cook and the heat from the porridge is going to cook it so this is how to cook porridge jam or core potage jam please try this try this recipe and you never stop cooking your porridge jam like this this porridge jam tastes yummy and i would love you to try it and please if you try this recipe tag me on my instagram continentalfood.cake and also follow me on my instagram i would love to be your friend the link to my instagram is going to be on the description box and all the ingredients that i use today i'm going to list them there in the description box thank you so much for watching my video till the end and if you're new here you've not subscribed please subscribe turn on your notification bell so that whenever i upload you will not miss it join the continental food and cake family we upload video every week and we would love you to be part of us so i'm going to leave you all here to my old subscribers thank you so much to my new subscribers thank you so much i love you all i love you all so so much and i will see you in another one bye bye